All right. This is Aria. Aria is a beautiful puff adder. Puff adders are the snake that is most known in Africa. They kill more people in Africa than any other snake. And I'm not in Africa. But I don't want to get bit by that. That is a very potent venom. It is a bitus ariatans. It's their scientific name and I named her Aria. And so Aria is fixing to get a little white rat. And uh, I'm going to do this very carefully. Because this, these have one of the fastest strikes in the world. They are known for striking so lightning fast that your reflexes, there's no way that you're going to be able to uh, keep from getting bit. If you're right in range, uh, it's going to be over for you. So I'm going to put this rat in. Oh, careful now. I'll put this rat back there. Oh, see why you don't want to reach in there? And Aria is a very fast striker. And if that rat comes in range like he's starting to do, he's going to get bit just like he got bit. And usually, wow, that was fast. Man, usually a bitus type of snake like this is, they usually hang on to it. They don't usually let go of their prey once they strike it. But Arya, she let go of him. And hopefully he won't hide back there where we can't see him. That's good, he's coming back out, but... Yeah, he struck him just right. And let's go back over here. Uh, uh, puff adders are from Africa, as I said earlier. And this is a beautiful female. They get heavy bodied. They're heavy. Look at that fang sticking out. They get heavy bodied snakes, so they're kind of thick. She's just a little baby, so she's got a lot of growing to do. But she's growing fast. She likes to eat. She already knows where the thing is. She's going to turn around and come back and get it. She's beautiful. Usually the males are uh, prettier than the females. The males will have a lot more color to them than the females. But for a female, she's very pretty. She's actually got more color to her than most females. And their uh, venom is our her venom is already in there, starting to digest that little rat. So as we as we wait, her digestive juices, which are is, part of it, is in her venom, is doing the work of going in and digesting that little rat dissolving the flesh and it kills rats pretty quick wow that's cool I love to watch a good fang stretch and they're ambush predators so instead of running after their food or hunting it down Puff adders, kind of like the uh, all the bitters, mainly most of the bitters are ambush predators, like the gaboon vipers. 
They wait in one spot for a long period of time. And they wait for something to cross in front of them. And they get it. That's why their strike is so fast. Well, I don't... I don't really plan... I might breed them eventually. But maybe not. You can hear my birds in the background. There's a little background music going on. Non-copyrighted background music so that we won't have a copyright problem. There we go. Oh, almost. Looks like she was about to put that head in her mouth. She's still going to. And the, the slower moving snakes like uh, the Puff Adder and the Gaboon Vipers. I keep them in the enclosures that are closer to the floor because they are ground dwellers. They usually stay on the ground for one thing and you don't have to worry about them. Uh, they, they move more slowly than the rest of them so if they do get out there and they're already on the ground they won't slither away as quick as some of the fast snakes. So they stay closer to the ground. And I'm a music guy. I was a music major in college, so I have a degree in music. And I did opera and that kind of, that was the kind of training I had. I was a voice major, so I sang a lot of opera. So what an aria is, and for those who may not know, an aria is like a solo in an opera. And that's, and her name, her scientific name is Bittis Ariatans. It's spelt a little different, the aria part. So I named her Aria. In case you're wondering how she got her name. And you see how she's using her fangs as tools. And reaching out. Now she'll grab it with that right fang. Now she'll grab it with the left fang. And then she'll grab it with the right fang. She's slowly shoving it down her throat. And each time she does that, she's not injecting venom anymore. They're not going to waste their venom now that it's already gone. But she's just poking it and pulling it with them fangs without using venom. She doesn't move around a lot. Most Bittus snakes don't. But she moves around a lot more than the Gaboon Vipers. The Gaboon Vipers, once they get in a spot, they can be there for weeks and never move. It's like, what kind of life is that when you never move from one spot for weeks? Now, mine move a little bit because I feed them once a week. And they move a little bit because they want to eat. But not much. They'll eat and still stay in that one spot. Where with this puff adder, she does move about. She goes in and out. Plus she uses her heat source. Most of my snakes won't come in and out of their hot spot. But she does. She uses her hot spot. Where most of them don't. And that wasn't too big of a meal. But it'll hold her over for a week. 
When she gets older and closer to full grown, I'll feed her less often. I'll feed her every two weeks or so. Because when they're babies like this, they're growing. And it's hard to, you can't overfeed a baby. They, they eat meat and it don't hurt to feed them. They're not going to get obese when they're babies. She's not actually, she's still a baby. She's less than a year old. So you can still call her baby. She's about doubled in size since I've gotten her. go and she was already showing off her fangs before she even started swallowing see how she moves her eyeball she's looking around a little bit but when she gets through swallowing that rat she'll yawn and stretch those fangs out and just let you get a good look at those big bad boys she got some pretty fierce looking fangs they get pierced way deep in you and load you full of venom. And you're not going to make it. If you get bit by this, good luck. Unless you have your own anti-venom on hand, even then it's going to, you know, you may lose whatever they bite. It may get amputated. And the hospitals in the United States most of them aren't going to carry anti-venom for African snakes like this. So if you did run to the hospital real quick without anti-venom of your own, they're going to have to call a zoo or some place like that and have it flown in, which could take hours. And you don't want to have to wait hours after getting injected with this kind of venom to start getting your antivenom. You're going to want that as quick as possible. So that makes these even more dangerous than American snakes like rattlesnakes or copperheads or cottonmouths. They're going to have the antivenom right on hand for those kinds of snakes. She's so cool. She's a beauty. I love their markings. What do they call them? Like chevrons or whatever chevron shape? Markings all the way down. And hers are very consistent. She's got some nice even ones. There's a little spot right there. Looks like they intersect, but for the most part, they're perfectly organized. Makes her a beautiful girl. Yeah, she's got it. Well, let's see if she gives us a good yawn. Show off those beautiful fangs. sees me moving. I didn't mean to move too much, but I think she knows. There we go. Well, she didn't stretch her fangs much, but she still might. I'm going to zoom in on her head. See if we can catch a fang stretch. Maybe we'll catch one before she gets behind that barrier that we won't be able to see. And it looks like that's what she's going to do. Alright, y'all make sure you like and subscribe. Love y'all. Bye.